Today we are going to be doing lesson six in the solutions unit, which is going to talk about dilution. Before we get started, I want us to go over yesterday's lesson. Yesterday we learned how to make a standard solution. What you're going to do is take a minute and organize these lab procedures in order. So I'll give you a minute and then I will come back and put my answers up. All right, so there is what, uh, there is my answer. Um, let's kind of go through this. When you're preparing a standard solution, the first thing that you want to do, based on the steps that we got, is weigh out the mass of the compound, okay? So that one's done. Then, after you weigh that out, you want to put that mass or that compound into a beaker and dissolve it in water, okay, using a stir stick. From there, you are going to transfer that compound into a volumetric flask using a funnel. Please do not try to put it in without the funnel. Once that is done, you are then going to rinse. You're going to rinse out all of the compound and make sure that it ends up in your volumetric flask. After the rinse, you are then going to add water until it reaches the meniscus, until that water level reaches that calibration line. And lastly, once everything is said and done, you will rinse your flask. Okay, for our other um, review question, you're going to determine which of the following are electrolytes or non-electrolytes. So just to quickly review, an electrolyte makes ions. So if we were testing this in a lab setting, we would see what conducts electricity. Okay, this happens as a result of ionization. So when an acid is put into water and dissociation. dissociation. That is so wrong. Then we have a non-electrolyte. A non-electrolyte, basically, it does not make ions. So it doesn't make ions. So these are things that are insoluble or undergoing dissolving. Okay, so for this, purpose of this course, we're just going to say anything that undergoes dissolving will be a non-electrolyte. Okay, we've got our four compounds here. Sulfuric acid, that's an acid, it's going to undergo ionization. So of course, it's going to be an electrolyte. Calcium carbonate. This one's kind of tricky because it's insoluble in water. Okay, so technically, would not form electrolytes. Then we have sucrose, that's going to undergo dissolving, so it's going to be a non-electrolyte. And then you will have your sodium nitrate, which is soluble, so it will form ions. Okay, so in our numeric response answer, we would get one, two, Uh, two, one. Perfect. Today's learning goals are going to be learning how to calculate dilution or using a dilution formula, understanding how dilution affects concentration, and then, of course, perform a dilution of a standard solution. So we're going to make a diluted standard solution within the lab. All right, let's get into what a dilution is. Basically, a stock solution is your initial solution. So this is something that's been provided in the lab. It's usually very concentrated, okay? And it's a solution from which samples are taken from. Solutions that have a concentration of 0 0.1, 
So a concentration of 0 0.1 mole per liter or less are considered to be dilute, very dilute. Okay, so that's a small, small, small um, concentration. Then anything with a 1 mole per liter concentration or higher is considered to be concentrated. Well, a lot of students will ask me, what about in between? For the purpose of this course, we're not going to classify the concentrations in between these two numbers. So if it's less than 0 0.1, we're going to call it dilute. If it's greater than 1 mole, uh, mole per liter, then we're going to call it concentrated. In between, we're not going to classify it. Okay, so the dilution equation is C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. Looks pretty familiar, hey? It reminds me of Boyle's Law, okay? So just like Boyle's Law, there was a proportionality. Basically, same thing here. If concentration increases, that means volume is decreasing. If concentration decreases, that means volume is increasing, okay? Which makes sense. Think about it. If you were making, let's say, let's say you're putting meal in your water, okay? You put one squeeze of meal in your water and then you add a cup of water to it, okay? You think it's too sweet, so you add another cup of water into it. When we increase the volume of that, your meal drink, it's going to decrease the concentration and spread that through more particles of water. Basically, this relationship is inversely proportional. So, concentration is inversely proportional to volume, or volume is inversely proportional to concentration. So, remember this little fish symbol is the proportionality sign. When I'm saying it's 1 over, that means it's inversely proportional. So, basically, when one increases, so when one of these things increase, the other decreases. This is a great way to check if your work is correct. If I'm adding water, it's going to make sense that my concentration is going to be less. If I'm removing water, or if volume is decreasing, I better get a higher concentration. Okay, let's get into some examples. Determining, so level one, determining volume or concentration using a, the formula. So simple plug and chug formula. Example one says water is added to 0 0.2 liters of, uh, of 2.4 mole per liter ammonium cleaning solution. So this is like Windex. Until the final volume is one liter. Find the concentration, remember this square brackets like that means concentration of the diluted solution. Okay, so let's list things out. So this is my V1, my C1, my V2, and I am looking for C2. Let's go down a bit. So C1 is equal to 2.4 moles, it's not how you spell moles, uh, moles per liter. So for the simplicity of the example, I am just going to use capital M. Remember capital M represents moles per liter, okay? The volume is 0 0.200 liters. Okay, C2 is what our unknown. It's our unknown. And then V2 is one liter. From there, we are going to use our formula. C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. We are interested in isolating for C2, so I divide both sides by V2. That eliminates V2 on this side. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the next. C2 is equal to C1V1 over V2. All right, 
So from here, a lot of students will ask me, do the units matter? Kind of, they do. Whatever units you put in, those are the units you're going to get out. So if I'm putting moles per liter for my concentration, I am going to get moles per liter for my concentration when I have finished the con uh, calculation. But you need to make sure that the other units match. So if this volume is in liters, this volume also needs to be in liters so that, they un so that the units cancel out. If one of them is different, it's not going to cancel out. So make sure your units match. Let's plug some numbers in. So 2.4 moles per liter multiplied by 0 0.2 liters divided by 1 liter. Liter cancels out and I'm left with moles per liter. Perfect. That's what I need. Once I calculate that all out, I am going to get a concentration of 0 0.480 moles per liter. This makes sense. Our volume increased, so our concentration should decrease. Okay, let's go ahead and do another example. A 1.2 liter solution of potassium carbonate has a concentration of 4.6, or sorry, of 0 0.46 moles per liter. When, what was the concentration of the stock solution if 20 milliliters was made to make the diluted solution? Okay, so, this is where students get a little bit confused about the labeling, okay? As long as you match your pair, we know that we have 1.2 liters of, of 0 0.46 mole per liter solution. And we are looking for the concentration of the stock solution. So stock is usually our initial solution. So this is my V1 and I am looking for C1. We actually want to know what was our initial concentration. Again, if you mix these two up, you should get the same answer, but just make sure that they're paired. So if you call this V2, then this should be C2. Okay, here we're going to put V2, C2. Let's go ahead and use our formula. So C1 is our unknown. It's what we're looking for, okay? V1 is our volume, which is 20 milliliters. From there, I have C2. My C2 is equal to 0 0.460 mole per liter. I'm going to use capital M, just makes it a little bit easier when I'm doing the formula. And lastly, my V2 is 1.20 liters. Okay, so I'm noticing that my volume units are not matching. So I need to convert one of them into so that they match. For my sake, I think it's easier to convert my V2. I'm going to multiply this number by 1,000 and turn it into milliliters. This will give me 1,200 milliliters. Now that the units match, we can go ahead and use our formula. C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. We are looking for C1, so I'm going to divide by V1. V1 cancels out. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the, no you do to the other. C1 is equal to C2, V2 divided by V1. From here, we're going to plug in our numbers. So I'm going to go 0 0.460 moles per liter multiplied by my V2, which is 1,200 milliliters divided by 20 milliliters. Milliliters cancels out with milliliters, and I'm left with moles per liter, which makes sense because we are looking for concentration. Once I plug these numbers in, I get an answer of 27.6 moles per liter. Makes sense. We took 20 milliliters of this concentrated solution and diluted it with 1,200 1, milliliters of water. So that our answer makes sense there.
So, question for you, what happens to concentration when solution becomes more dilute? Basically, concentration decreases. So, as solution becomes more dilute, concentration decreases. Okay, so just think about how adding too much water into, let's say, you're diluting your juice. If you add too much, you can barely taste it. All right, one more example, and then we'll move on to the lab procedure. A 340 milliliter solution has a concentration of 0 0.47 uh, mole per liter. What will the concentration be if 290 milliliters of water is added to the mixture? Okay, I'm going to visualize what's happening here. So let's say you have a glass of water. You have 340 milliliters of water, and you're sitting at about a concentration of 0 0.470. Oh, the square bracket should be here. drawn that way equals. Hold on, let me. Okay, so here's the diagram. You have 340 milliliters of water, and then your concentration is 0 0.47 moles per liter. What happens then? is you have added 290 milliliters more. So I'll, we've added, so we plus 290 milliliters more of water. Now we want to see what happens to the concentration in the speaker, okay? So that's what's happening there. Let's go ahead and set up our variables. C1 is 0 0.470 mole per liter. V1 is 340 milliliters. C2 is our unknown. We are looking for concentration. And lastly, V2, we're looking at the total amount of liquid within the speaker. So that's actually going to be 340 milliliters plus 290. I know that I have to plus because it's saying water was added. Okay, so if it's saying water was added, you need to add to your total volume. Once I add those two numbers together, I get a final volume of 630 milliliters. Okay. Once I isolate the formula, I get a concentration, C2, is equal to C1. Hold on, I'm going to move this down. Okay, so once I've isolated the formula, I get C2 is equal to C1, V1, over V2, which equals 0 0.470 moles per liter multiplied by 340 milliliters divided by 630 milliliters. Milliliters cancels out and you are left with moles per liter which is great because we're looking for concentration. Okay once I plug that into the calculator I get a concentration of 0 0.254 254 moles per liter. This makes sense. We've added water. We expect our concentration to decrease. The last part of this unit, you will watch a video and then come up with a lab procedure for preparing a dilution on a solution.